Welcome to the Smith & Nephew Digital Education module on the Eye of Time, Infection and Inflammation, which forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound care. Today, we will be discussing the Eye of Time, Infection and or Inflammation. By the end of this module, you will be able to identify the factors that enhance wound infection, identify the primary and secondary signs of sy and symptoms in acute and chronic wounds, describe the wound infection continuum, and describe how biofilms impair wound healing. Wound infection has been described as the invasion by and multiplication of pathogenic microorganisms which may produce tissue injury and which may progress to avert disease through a variety of cellular or toxic mechanisms. Infection results in a prolonged inflammatory phase. Bacteria compete with other cells for oxygen and nutrients on the wound bed, interfering with the healing process and potentially causing further problems. It is very important to recognise that all wounds contain bacteria and microbes. Whether those microbes create a problem in the wound is dependent upon several factors. The Time Clinical Decision Support Tool section for infection or inflammation addresses the importance of assessment, interventions and goals. Let's look firstly at identifying infection. As mentioned previously, infection can be difficult to recognise in chronic wounds. Multiple factors influence wound infection, that is the ability of the bacteria to impair wound healing. In the past, evidence has identified that 10 to the power of 5 or 100,000 colony forming units, i.e. bacteria that can divide and grow, per gram of tissue biopsied was identified as infections within burn wounds and has been associated with skin graft failure. However, Newer evidence reports healing in some chronic wounds with 10 to the power of 5 colony forming units and any level of beta hemolytic streptococcus or certain combinations of bacteria at fewer than 10 to the power of 5 colony forming units can impede wound progress. Therefore, in addition to the bacterial quantity and their virulence, an important factor affecting wound infection may be the ability of the host's immune response to resist bacterial invasion and damage. Identifying wound infection begins with clinical observations. However, signs and symptoms of infection in a chronic wound can be very subtle and very often overlooked. Let's take a look at the signs of infection in acute and chronic wounds. As you see here, in an infected wound, such as a surgical incision, the classical signs are usually present. You can see here these very familiar signs and symptoms. However, with chronic wound infection, the less familiar secondary signs of infection are more common than the classical signs. A wound that simply does not progress as expected may be infected. Also, a healing full thickness wound should include strawberry jam red granulation tissue. Infection may be present if there is an absence of granulation or if that granulation itself is friable, i.e. it bleeds very easily pale or otherwise discoloured, foul odour, increased serous drainage, increased pain at the wound site or wound breakdown are all signs of infection in the chronic wound. There are various levels of damage caused by bacteria. The contamination infection continuum can help us better understand bacteria's effect on the host. But first, let's talk about optimising the host's ability to respond. Host resistance may be affected both locally and with systemic factors. You can see here some interventions to improve the host resistance and control the comorbidities, i.e. diabetes. If we can improve the tissue's perfusion and oxygenation, i.e. revascularize, that will improve the wound bed and provide nutritional support. Counsel regarding changes in lifestyle behaviors, such as weight loss or smoking cessation, will improve the wound's chances of defending itself against the bacteria 
applying compression therapy when appropriate to reduce interstitial oedema. Next, we want to assess the wound. Every patient with a wound exists somewhere on this contamination infection continuum. Bacteria are present in all wounds and, at low levels, help to stimulate the inflammatory response necessary for healing. Contamination means that bacteria are present in the wound. Colonization is the replication of bacteria which are due to the wound surface. Low levels of colonization do not impair wound healing. At this point, bacteria aren't dividing and aren't causing a host response. The point at which bacteria multiply on the wound surface and interfere with wound healing is known as localised infection. This is where the bacteria are beginning to divide and are beginning to cause a localised host response. Localised infection can impair wound healing without creating a host response. Additionally, local infection is not dependent upon a specific bacterial quantity, i.e. 100,000 or 10 to the power of 5 colony forming units. Spreading infections indicate that the bacteria have moved into the peri wound soft tissue, which will result in erythema and possible pain and oedema. Systemic infection occurs when bacteria enter the bloodstream. Whilst vigilance is important for any chronic wound, treatment is required for wounds with local, spreading or systemic infection. Coming up, we will discuss assessment and management of each of these findings. When assessing for infection, first ask yourself, is this wound progressing as you would expect? If so, the wound is probably contaminated or has low colonisation levels of microbes. Treatment in this case would include cleansing the wound, applying an appropriate dressing based upon the exudate levels and monitoring continually for signs of an infection. If the wound presents with secondary signs of infection, it may have a localised infection. Formerly, this was known as critical colonisation. The bacteria have overcome the host's ability to fight off the infection. Whilst the wounds shown here are red, they are not healthy, granulating wounds. For wounds with a localised infection, it is important to cleanse, debride if necessary, and apply an antimicrobial dressing. It is important to note that biofilms have been identified in the majority of chronic wounds and may be one of the most significant causes for delayed wound healing. Traditionally, assessment and management of wound infection or the bacterial burden was focused on planktonic bacteria, which are free-floating, free-living bacteria. Planktonic bacteria can be eliminated by the host's immune system or specific antimicrobial. Biofilm awareness has increased over the past decade and gained attention in wound management. Biofilms are adherent to bacteria enclosed in a protective polysaccharide matrix. Biofilms are protected from phagocytosis by macrophages and neutrophils, and they are highly tolerant of antibiotic and antimicrobial agents. Examples of biofilm outside of wound care include the plaque on your teeth. Routine visits to the dental hygienist are necessary to remove this biofilm because they are not removed by brushing alone. After managing the underlying etiology of wounds and comorbidities, such as pressure, arterial insufficiency, blood glucose, etc., Schultz and colleagues agreed that biofilms are probably the most important single reason for persistent delayed wound healing. There are no diagnostic tests available for us to identify biofilms, and biofilms cannot be seen by the naked eye. While slough may be a downstream result of biofilm, slough Debris and exudate should not be mistaken for a biofilm. The consensus guidelines for identification and treatment of biofilms in chronic wounds suggest clinical findings which may infer the presence of a biofilm. The principles of wound bread preparation discussed in this presentation are important components for optimising the wound for progress. Specifically for biofilm reduction, the guidelines recommend repeated debridement to physically remove the biofilm. However, 
Debridement alone is not enough. Biofilms may begin to reform within 24 hours. Therefore, the use of an appropriate topical antimicrobial agent may help to prevent or at least stall the regrowth of a biofilm. Schultz et al. recommended a step-down stroke step-up approach to biofilm management. They stress the importance of starting with multiple interventions in combination rather than trying a little of one therapy or another. Interventions may be decreased as the wound progresses. Then, if necessary, advanced therapies may be required. This requires frequent assessment and reassessment of the wound. If the wound demonstrates the classical signs of infection or the patient exhibits signs of systemic infection, treatment should include the addition of systemic antibiotics, which are selected based upon the infective organism. For patients with reduced perfusion or necrotic wounds, antibiotics may not reach the wound bed. Therefore, it is essential that antimicrobials or antiseptic dressings should be used in conjunction with antibiotics in these cases. Now, we have reached the end of the module. Can you recall? Can you name the signs of infection in a chronic wound? Can we see the biofilm in a wound? And when should we suspect the biofilm? To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer these quiz questions. Well done. We are now at the end of the module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you have learnt and apply it into your daily practice. It may be useful to think of some patients with wounds that are stuck in the cycle of inflammation and how you might manage that going forward. If you are on the NMC register, then please click the link below to access a copy of the revalidation form. The form is in two parts with a front sheet where you simply fill in your details and a back sheet which allows for deeper reflection. Adding to this reflection will mean that you will be able to claim extra CPD minutes. Thank you very much for your time today. Please remember to look at the other sections of the Smith & Nephew channel to access additional modules to help you on your learning journey.